Flying a long corridor, such as a highway or railroad, is much more efficient if you use a linear mission plan. You can do this by adding points or using a KML to create the flight boundary. This video will show you how to add points using DJI Pilot 2 or GSRTK on your remote controller. If you would like to use a KML file, check out our training video, KML Files for Mission Planning, to learn more. Linear missions are a relatively straightforward process. In this video, we will review the best practices for planning an efficient linear mission and how to capture the most accurate data for your survey. It is important to note that the workflows we're covering in this module are for the Mavic 3 Enterprise, or the M3E, the Matrice 300 RTK, or the M300 RTK, and Phantom 4 RTK, or the P4R. While the workflows for other drones can be similar, they can also vary significantly. Please refer to our knowledge base, help.propellerarrow.com, regarding the specific drone that you are using. We'll be covering a lot in this video. Please check out the supporting documentation for additional information, or click the support tab in your Propeller portal if you have more questions. Welcome to Propeller U. First, we'll review how to plan a linear mission for the M3E or the M300 RTK. Let's start using DJI Pilot 2. These settings will be the same for both the M3E and the M300. From the home screen of DJI Pilot, tap Flight Route. Next, tap on Create a Route. From the Mission Choices, choose the Linear option. Once in Map View, drop points to mark the start and the end of your corridor. You can add more points to your corridor, if necessary, to fit the geography and curvature or the path of your corridor. Adjust the flight band cutting distance to make the mission segments as even as possible. Once complete, give your mission a name. Next, select your drone's camera and lens. Specify your flight settings. Please note that some settings are required to capture accurate survey data, while other settings are the drone pilot's preference. For more detailed information, check out our knowledge base article, How to Plan a Linear Mission in DJI Pilot. Here you'll find a detailed chart explaining each setting and why we recommend using it. Determine if you want to use the single route option. This option lets you decide if you want to complete the mission in either one long segment or several shorter segments. If flying longer segments, please remember, you should always keep direct line of sight with the drone. Turn equal left and right extensions on and choose if you need a buffer on both sides of the center line. Choose the extension length to determine how much buffer you want on both sides of the center line. Unless you are trying to reach the required 10 minute mission time per section, increase the cutting band distance. Turn include center line to on. ASL or above sea level and ALT, altitude, should be set to relative to takeoff point. Set the flight altitude between 100 and 400 feet, or 60 and 120 meters. This will be a factor in determining how quickly you would like to complete the mission and the ground sample distance you will need. Remember, the higher you fly, the quicker it will be. Determine the mission speed. Again, you need to reach 10 minutes of survey time per flight, so please adjust the speed accordingly. If your corridor is wide enough, you can disable boundary optimization. Otherwise, enable it in order to collect additional images on each side of the corridor flight path. Set the photo mode to distance interval shot. Set your drone to return to home upon completion. In the advanced settings, we recommend using roughly 80% overlap for both side and frontal overlap. This will provide enough overlap if some images are poor quality or missing. Lastly, save your mission. Now, let's review the camera settings. These settings will differ depending on which payload you are using. Use the chart provided in the article, How to Plan a Linear Mission in DJI Pilot, for more detail on optimal settings for either the M3E or the M300 RTK. One notable difference between the M300 and the M3E camera settings is the de-warping setting. The M300 RTK requires de-warping to be disabled, while the M3E should have de-warping enabled for the best results. Let's review the camera settings for the M300 RTK drone first. Tap the slider bar menu in the camera view. Focus mode should be set to first waypoint auto-focused. 
dewarping should be disabled for best results using the M300. The image ratio should be set to 3-2. This utilizes the whole sensor. The image format should be set to .jpg to use with propeller processing. Set the white balance to the conditions of the day. An incorrect white balance setting can result in poor image quality and inaccurate survey results. The mechanical shutter should be enabled to eliminate distortion. The photo mode should be set to S for shutter priority to avoid motion blur in your images. The shutter speed should be set to 1 over 1000. This is usually a good place to start for sunny conditions. In low light conditions, you can reduce the shutter speed to around 1 over 800 or lower. Now, let's review the camera settings for the M3E. Tap the slider bar menu in the camera view. The image ratio should be set to 4.3 to utilize the entire sensor. The image format should be .jpg to use with propeller processing. The mechanical shutter should be enabled. The M3E should have dewarping enabled for best results. Photo mode should be set to S for shutter priority to avoid motion blur in your images. The shutter speed should be set to 1 over 1000. This is usually a good place to start for sunny conditions. In low light conditions, you can reduce the shutter speed to about 1 over 800 or lower. Now that we've reviewed linear mission planning for the M300 and the M3E, let's take a look at linear mission planning for the P4R. In the GSRTK app on your controller, select the linear flight mission option on the plan page. Draw a line by tapping points on the map. Alternatively, you can import a KML file. Check out our knowledge base for more information on creating KML files for mission planning. Using the line you drew as a reference, expand the buffer on either side at least 32 feet or 10 meters or up to a maximum of 1.2 miles or 2 kilometers. For linear elements longer than 1.2 miles or 2 kilometers, the mission will be divided into several submissions with a minimum length of 0.3 miles or 0.5 kilometers and a maximum of 1.2 miles or 2 kilometers. The flight altitude, speed, camera settings, and overlap rate is the same as if you were conducting a 2D mission. For more detailed information, please review the article How to Plan a 2D Photogrammetry Mission in GSRTK in our knowledge base, help.propellerarrow.com. Set the height to 260 to 400 feet, or 80 to 120 meters. The speed can be maximum allowable unless you need to reach the required 10 minute flight time. In that case, reduce the speed. Set the shooting mode to distance shooting, allowing the drone to capture consistent image overlap. Set the finish option as return to home. Altitude optimization should be off. Unless the terrain you are surveying is at a much different height than your home point, set the relative altitude at zero meters. Now let's move on to the P4RTK optimal camera settings. To utilize the whole sensor, set the photo ratio to 3-2. White balance should be set to the conditions of the day. Setting the white balance is important as an incorrect white balance setting will result in poor photo stitching or inaccurate coloring of your model. Metering mode should be set at average. Make sure the gimbal angle is at negative 90 degrees. To avoid motion blur, the shutter priority mode should be set to S. This tells the camera that a fixed shutter speed must be used. The camera can adjust the exposure with aperture and ISO. One over a thousand is usually a good place to start for sunny conditions. In low light conditions, reduce the shutter speed to one over 800 and lower the speed. Leaving the distortion correction as disabled allows our photogrammetric software to undistort the images itself. The software usually does a better job. Setting the overlap at about 75% should provide enough overlap if some images are missing or of poor quality. The margin setting can be set to zero, provided that you have covered the entire area you would like to survey. When making a linear mission, you need at least three rows of images but we strongly recommend four to five rows to ensure an accurate survey. There are two flight modes for linear missions, full coverage and efficiency. Full coverage mode has one or two turns more than efficiency mode. We typically recommend full coverage to assure that the area of interest you're looking to survey has the correct overlap for modeling and corrections. Finally, name the mission and tap OK to save it. As with other PPK workflows, we require the use of at least one arrow point during the drone's flight. For best results, place one arrow point or other ground control point at each end of the linear corridor and at 0.75 miles or 1.2 kilometer intervals. If you only have one arrow point, place it near the location you're flying from. Once you've laid your arrow points out, 
and I've turned them on, select Invoke on your mission or go to the flight page to start the mission. If your mission is broken into segments, you'll see each one has a number associated with it. You can select the submission by tapping that number and verify that the mission is selected by seeing that it's highlighted compared to the others. To select subsequent segments, select the executing menu and tap the appropriate number. The composite survey tool in the propeller platform makes it possible to fly and upload worksite surveys in smaller sections and merge them with other surveys to form a complete and up-to-date view of the whole worksite. Check out our knowledge base article for help with getting started with composite surveys. You're now ready to fly. In this training module, we went over how to plan a linear mission and best practices for the M300 RTK, the M3E, and the P4R TK drone, including flight band settings, flight route settings, camera setting similarities and differences for each drone, and the best method for using ground control for linear missions. Thanks for watching. To learn more, you can read the supporting materials associated with this module or check out our knowledge base, help.propellerarrow.com.